name, Lord. Thank you. We say hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You won it all for me. Death couldn't hold you. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you glad death couldn't hold him? Hallelujah. He's no longer in the grave. He is a risen king. And we worship him in the beauty of his holiness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all those who love the Lord today, amen? amen. And amen. Well, you may be seated in the presence of God this morning. Glory to God. Oh, boy, I tell you, praise the Lord. We've said an atmosphere of worship uh, this morning. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you, anything you came in here, praise the Lord. You come in the presence of God. Listen, that anointing, it'll knock all that off. Glory to God. If you have a spirit of heaviness, when you start getting the presence of God, I want to tell you, glory to God. When you start saying, Jesus, you're the risen. See, you did it just for me. I mean, cool, I think you did it for somebody else. But Lord, I think you did it just for me. You won the, listen, you won the victory just for me. And because you are victorious, and I'm in you, Lord. You, listen, I experience victory. I should experience victory all the time. Hallelujah. Because how I many you know there's no defeat in Jesus? I said, y'all hear what I'm saying? There is no defeat in Jesus. Amen. So my faith is not in myself. My faith is in Jesus. Hallelujah. And I say, praise the Lord. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. Seated in majesty. You are the risen king. I need to say that. Start saying that all the time, death couldn't hold you down. That means your problem, your situation can't hold you down. Glory to God. Jesus, when he rose up, praise the Lord, you got up with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you experience victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You take the old gray clothes out, praise the Lord, and you have the robe of righteousness. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Now listen, I don't know. We're on Facebook Live. I don't know. Glory to God. We are. Praise the Lord. Hey, I don't apologize. I just want to tell you, we're just glad to be in God's service one more time. And we say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus is risen today. Hallelujah. And the world wants to keep that in one day out of the year. No, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus every time we come together. Because he is the risen king. In Jesus' name. But we do say good morning to each one of you. Greetings in the name of our blessed Lord. And Savior Jesus Christ, and we thank God that you come to the house of worship, house of praise, one more time. And to all of our Facebook family, we want to say welcome, welcome to House of Faith Christian Center. We're located in beautiful Smyrna, Tennessee. I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord. Here at House of Faith, we have a threefold vision. That is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. House of Faith Christian Center, we are a minister of excellence, effectiveness, and encouragement. And praise the Lord. And we say, hallelujah, glory to God. You want Jesus has won the victory. So I'm glad, glad to have you with us this morning. And so again, if you watch this by Facebook Live, I'm going to ask you to go in and hit like and hit share. Hit like and hit share. Praise the Lord. If you watch this by delayed broadcast, I want you to enjoy this worship experience. It's going to be awesome. Praise the Lord. So listen, we want you to go ahead. And, and, and get your Bibles out, get ready for that, whether it's on printed text or whether it's on your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod, your iRom, the Word of God, you get ready for this Word, it is going to be so icy, awesome, glory to God. And so again, we're glad to see you, 
you know, Facebook Live, all the places you could have been, you have decided to listen to us here at House of Faith Christian Center. To all of our first time guests here at House of Faith Christian Center, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, praise the Lord at the House of Faith Christian Center. Glory to God. And we pray that Jesus will continue to be Lord of your life. So again, you watch this broadcast by Facebook Live. Again, go ahead and like it and share. It's not too late to go ahead and contact your family members and let them know House of Faith Christian Center that we are on the air so you contact those family members. You know who they are, mama them, daddy them, baby brother them, baby sister them, pookie them, chiquita them, all the hymns, contact them. Let them know House of Faith Christian Center that we are on the air, praise the Lord. And we've got not only a word of God, but we've got a word of God that will change your life forever in the name of Jesus. So listen, we're going to get right into this word. I'll tell you, I'm fired up, praise the Lord. Lord. We got any people that's here fired up to the Lord? Praise the Lord. Did y'all know like some five foot on you? You anybody fired up for the Lord this morning? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You gotta shake some stuff off. Hallelujah. We just sing a song that says shake the devil off. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Get loose in Jesus. Amen. And you have a heart to receive. God's got a word that will bless you. So let's go ahead and get our Bibles out. And we're going to hold up our Bibles up high, and we're going to make this confession of faith. Get right into this word of God. It's going to be so awesome. Praise the Lord. If you would say these three words, this is my Bible. Y'all got to sit down. Listen now. Y'all, come on. Come on now. Praise the Lord. We got to say it like you got some energy in this place. Amen. Say this. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am now ready. Ready, 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 ready to receive, receive the, dynamic, the dynamic, the powerful, powerful the ever increasing, the, ever the life changing, the life -changing word, of word of God. My mind is alert, my, is alert. my heart is receptive. I boldly confess, I'll never be the same. I boldly, boldly confess, I'll never, never be the same. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess, after hearing God's word today, I'll never, never, never be the same. For thine is the kingdom, and mine is the kingdom. For thine is the power, and mine is the power. For thine is the glory, and mine is the glory. Forever, and ever, and ever. For this is my receiving day, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Again, we're going to go ahead and pass our handouts again. You watch us by Facebook Live. Go ahead and like and hit share. Hit like and hit share. Well, this year, God has given us a theme again. God's amazing favor to you in 2022 here at House of Faith Christian Center. We're celebrating 30 years of the gospel of God's grace. Our scripture that God has given us all year from is Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 in the New American Standard Version. And it says, and Jesus, listen, and Jesus kept on increasing in wisdom, stature, and in favor of God and with man. Hallelujah. So we see that there was an anointing of Jesus of increase. Everybody say increase. increase. He did not decrease, not even staying the same. There was increase. That means things kept getting better and better and better. And so it gets what increase. What there was increasing. He increased in wisdom. Glory to God. He took knowledge and he applied that knowledge in making situations. He includes stature. Stature was basically uh, his reputation that, that, that he had. Uh, how he related to things. He kept on. He kept on. He stayed the same. Praise. He developed. And then he also gets an increase in favor in two areas. First of all, he increased in favor with God. But then also, listen, he increased in favor with man. So the favor of God was all upon Jesus and allowed him to have that favor that when they increased with him and also with men. So today I want to continue on. We've been ministering all year round, all year long since January. And we will continue all this year and talking about God's amazing favor to you in 2022. Would you look at somebody and say, say friend? friend. And then you no, 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 no. You say to me as a friend, I'm like, you my friend or not? Listen, to, listen, look at them pretty blue, green, hazel, brown, hope they're not bloodshot eyes this morning, and say, friend, friend. I'm, believing I'm believing God's amazing, God's amazing. Favor, favor to you, to you. in 2022. <laughs> Hallelujah. So today, uh, uh, and we're going to start like a little mini-series and talk about the description, direction, 
and destruction of God's divine favor. We're going to talk about that for uh, today and talk about it on next time and next week as well. The description of uh, direction and destruction of God's divine favor. Now, here's our introduction. I want you to understand this. Okay, listen to me now. Throughout the Bible, I understand this. The repeated request of God, listen, you'll find this all over the Bible, is for our obedience unto him. See, God really doesn't care, and a lot of people understand this. See, God really doesn't care uh, about our good deeds or the talents we may exhibit professionally or socially. Listen, all God wants, listen, all God wants for us is our obedience. Say this, all God all wants for me, wants for me is, my is my obedience. See, that, that's, that, that's, what he, that's what he's looking for. See, he wants us to do what he says because acts of obedience, listen my friends, it proves our trust in him. And in fact, faith and trust are the things he admires most. And the quality he most passionately responds to, and they both stem from obedience. Everybody say obedience. obedience. So therefore, listen, if we want an increase of favor, how many people want an increase of favor? We all want it, praise the Lord, in our lives. Listen, we must understand the description, follow the direction, and beware of not doing what God tells us to do, which will lead to destruction of God's divine favor. So, I'm going to talk about this favor of God a little bit, but let's look in, in Psalms verse 5, verse 12. Psalms verse 5 and verse 12. We talk about the, the, this, this favor. All right? So this is a psalm of, of, of David, and, and, and David was in the dire straits. David was being attacked by his enemies from without and within, you know, going through a difficult time. But this, he looked at God and, you know, and he, this is what he said about God in verse 12. He says, for you, O Lord. He said, I understand what the enemies are trying to do to me. I understand that they're trying to lay traps for me. I understand the temptations are coming from all kind of way. I understand my friends are trying to get me to do things I know I, I, I shouldn't do, you know, and they're trying to say, look at them and look at the news and look at the media and look at uh, what's going on and look at inflation and look at high gas prices and look at uh, shortage and look at wars, all that. He says, I understand that. He says, but God, I want to focus on you. He says, for you, O Lord, watch this, will bless the righteous. Now, this word bless, again, means to empower and to prosper. It means to endure to be successful. So it says, God, listen, you're going to bless the righteous. Now, who are the righteous? It's not the people who just do right things. It's the people, listen, who have a right relationship with God. Somebody say relationship. relationship. See, if you have a right relationship with God, God calls you. He says you're righteous. How do I get a relationship with God? Through Jesus. Second Corinthians 5, uh, verse 17, uh, uh, verse 22 says, For he who knew no sin became sin for us, Jesus. Why? That we may be made the righteous of God through Christ Jesus. So we don't become righteous by doing just good works. We don't get righteous by trying to just do the right thing. No, we do, we're righteous because of Jesus. Listen, he has made us righteous. Guess what? He took our sins and gave us his righteousness. So therefore, God, you will empower us who are righteous. Now watch this, he says. And with favor, you will surround him with a shield. Praise the Lord. How many of you know that you came here with a shield of favor around you this day? Praise God. Listen, the enemy tried to touch you, but he couldn't touch you. He tried to do all kinds of things to discourage you. Listen, he may be trying to pump you, but because God has given you a shield of favor. Hallelujah. Yes. You've been surrounded by that favor. And that's good news. Amen. Praise Glory to God. So today I, I want to talk about uh, the description of of God's divine favor. And we've got to describe this favor. You know, uh, uh, you know, when you describe something, you know, you look at it and you begin to kind of form some things here. So let's kind of get the description of God's favor. And here's the thing about it, my friends. You've got to see yourself in God's favor. I, I can't make you do that. 
See, you got to have what it says. I have to see myself in God's favor, and I have to see that this favor will surround me like a shield. That when I get up in the morning time, I've got God's favor. When I go to work, I've got God's favor. Praise the Lord. When I'm at work, I've got God's favor. When I'm hanging out, I've got God's favor. Now, this favor is a shift. And listen, the more you say that, I've got God's favor, I've got God's favor. I understand things that may not be right, i got God's favor. I understand that, listen, I may not be where I want to be, but I still have God's favor. I understand that sometimes I do things I shouldn't do, I say things I shouldn't say. I understand that, but I say because of Jesus, who has made me righteous, I say that that favor of God will shield me, hallelujah, and favor me. And you know, praise the Lord, I put that shield on. See, listen, in, in battle they had a shield, and listen, it was a little small shield. When, when the, the soldiers had, guess what? It, it, listen, it was it was a big shield, and that big shield would, 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 would be so it would be from the feet all the way up to to it was shooting dots at them. The enemy shooting arrows at them, whatsoever. And when they could put that shield up, it could wall out. So listen, I want to tell you, when the enemy comes to give you his best shot, you understand you put that shield of favor in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, so let's talk about the description of God's favor. Now, I had this read this. It says the favor of God can be described as an act of true compassion on the part of God made toward needy and undeserved individuals. Hallelujah. I mean, and you have been in need before? Praise the Lord. And one thing about this grace, is something you don't deserve. It's something you can't earn. It's something you can't buy. That's why it's called grace. Listen, in simple terms, we can define God's favor as giving us the ability to do something which is humanly impossible for us to do. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. And that's why God wants to say, God says, listen, I want to restore favor to you so far that humanly, it just can't be taking place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When I think about this favor, everybody say favor. favor. Somebody say favor again. Favor. Look at somebody say favor. See, you need to hear this. You need to hear this word favor. You need to hear it all the time. You need to get in your spirit and say favor, favor, favor. I don't care what they're talking about on the news. You need to start saying favor. I don't care what they're saying. You need to start saying favor. But I'm driving down. Down the road sometimes, and I see somebody pulled over, and their hood is up on the car. I can speak on that. Favor! Hallelujah. You go to the mailbox, you get a bill, praise the Lord, and you don't have the money. You ought to holler, Favor! That God, either you're going to give me the money, or you're going to cancel the debt, God. I don't care how you do it. I'm speaking favor on this situation. Amen? You go to the doctor, you get a doctor's report, it's not so good. You ought to say, Favor! Somebody say favor. favor. Say it like you mean it. Favor. favor. Say it like you mean it. Favor. favor. You know, yesterday I was, uh, I went to an installation of a good friend of mine who got installed in, in his new church. And uh, uh, we had a wonderful worship service and, you know, it was just so awesome. And you say, well, Pastor, okay, well, but what's so special about pastor getting installed in a new church? Well, that was good. But what I need to tell you is that six years ago, this pastor was in the hospital. And uh, he was having all kinds of things going on his body. And the doctor came and says, Pastor, now this was six years ago. He said, I got some good news or some bad news for you. And the uh, pastor said, give me the bad news. He said, the bad news is you're going to die. He said, you've got throat cancer. It's eating away your larynx. He says, you've got the arteries going to your heart. You know, and I think, well, what, what is it? Three arteries that go to your heart? Three things that go to your heart? He says only one of them is working. He says the other two are unrepairable. That's nothing we can do. 
It's time you get your affairs in order. He says, that's, he said, that's the bad news. What's the good news? He said, good news is that we're going to put you on hospice. And we're going to give you all the medication we possibly we can do. Don't you hear Jimmy now? Somebody say faith. Faith. He says, medically, there's nothing else we can do. You got the cancer, your throat, you, you only got one artery going to your, to, to your heart, the others are irreparable. We can't do surgery or anything at all. It's over. We've done all we can do. Call your family in. Get your affairs in order. He said the devil came and says, it's over for you. And the devil says, we're going to put a period. Somebody say, but God. God. <laughs> God removed that period and he put a comma. <laughs> he said, it's not over until it's over. And on yesterday, after being five, six years on hospice, August 21st, 2021, God took him off of hospice. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Praise yeah. the Lord. And he's back preaching the gospel. And on yesterday, he got installed in his new church. Somebody say favor. Amen. I want to tell you, my friends, it's not over. <laughs> Until it's over. He understood that he had the favor of God. And whenever you get yourself in a situation where you can't handle it, you need to turn it over to God and say, God, I thank you for favor. Thank you. When the doctor says there's no more we can do, when the bank says, you know what, you didn't get the loan, it didn't fall through, when they talk about they're going to put you out, when they talk about, listen, you will never be anything, when they say, listen, you'll be on drugs for the rest of your life, you'll be a crackhead, you'll be an alcoholic, listen, you'll be on the streets, nobody wants you, when all that, hey, you look at the doctor and say, God, I thank you for favor. <laughs> Somebody say favor. Hallelujah. You gotta see yourself favor. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And listen, and the guy who preached his message, who preached the sermon yesterday, was a former crackhead. <laughs> and now he's a bishop in the church. Somebody say favor. favor. I gotta see yourself favor. The favor of God. That God will use you. So what I want to do, I just want to, uh, uh, I want to talk about this description. God's favor is present in five areas. In five areas, we're going to hit this. Praise the Lord, and you're going to see the favor of God. You're going to be described. You're going to see favor so much. Praise the Lord, and you're going to see yourself walking in favor. Wherever you see yourself in right now, you see the favor of God change your situation. Hallelujah! And you see, every time I turn around, He's making a way. Who? Favor? Favor? <laughs> Glory to God. Do you deserve it? No, that's why it's called grace and favor. So let's look at these five areas. Number one, understand that a person seeks the faith face of God in prayer. So listen, you will see the favor of God when you seek the face of God in prayer. I'm not talking about just praying because someone said pray for me. I'm talking about seeing the face of God in the midst of you praying. That you're just not moments of words. You're not just saying something to be religious. You want to see God's face in your prayers. Look at uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to verse 10. Praise the Lord. This is commonly called the prayer of what we call prayer of Jabez that we have. What has happened? The Chronicles was describing the lineage of the sons of Israel. And in this lineage was one of the most popular sons by the name of Judah. Because out of Judah, the Bible talked about, will come the, the lion out of the tribe of Judah. And that lion was Jesus. Hallelujah. And so the Chronicle is going to write, and he's going to show this lineage of, of Judah and how it comes through David and how it comes to descendant. And basically, he's going to show how Jesus comes through this. When he talked about a guy by the name of Jabez, everybody say Jabez. Amen. Jabez was an interesting fellow, so we're going to read this. It says, now Jabez, verses 9, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and verse 10. He says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. 
And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Anybody has some pain before? Praise the Lord. You had some pain in your life before? You know, somebody know I'm talking. Anybody here? Am I the only one up here who have never had some pain going on in their life? You got pain all around you? Physical pain, spiritual pain, emotional pain, financial pain, relationship pain. You got some pain, and you're in that situation. But I like what Jabez said. Although I, I, I came out of pain, it says, verse 10 says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, <laughs> that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory. Somebody say, increase. increase. And that you would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Hallelujah! You see, my friend, listen, he wasn't first focused on his circumstances. He was focused on the face of God. And I want to tell you, when you focus on the face of God, this son of our favor will come. Because here are some areas here. Number one, what did he pray for? He prayed for blessing. He said, Lord, listen, in verse 10, he said, they called on the God of Israel and said, you need to know who to call on. You got to call on God. I said, listen, when you're in a situation, when you're in pain, you got to call on God. You got to call on the Lord. Call him up. Old folks says, Jesus is on the main line. Come on, everybody. Call him up and what? Tell him what you want. You got to call him up and tell him what you want. He said, Lord, listen, I'm in a situation. He said, Lord, I want you to bless me, Lord. I want you to empower me, Lord. I want you to do it to see, Lord. Hallelujah. I got pain, and the only pain thing that can take away the pain is your blessing. So he called on the God of Israel. He said, Lord, you'll bless me. So he asked for blessing. Then he asked for faithfulness. Praise the Lord. He said, Lord, enlarge my territory. He said, Lord, I need the ink, I need the norm of increase. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How do you know God don't want you to stay the same? God wants the norm of increase. He wants the increase of wisdom, the increase of stature, the increase of faith with God, the increase of faith with man. God wants increase. Somebody say increase. Increase. Hallelujah. You know what? See, we serve the God, we call him El Shaddai. You know what El Shaddai means? He's the God who's more than enough. Somebody, he's more than enough. I said like you mean, he's more than enough. Whatever you're lacking, he's more than enough. He'll take you from not enough to just enough over to the land of more than enough. So God increased our territory. Praise the Lord. Listen, I'm praying for House of Faith Christian Center. I said, Lord, enlarge our territory. Lord, we're going to be too big to where we are. Lord, give us space. Lord, give us room. Lord, give us land. Lord, give us property. Lord, give us favor. Somebody say favor. Favor. <laughs> enlarge, enlarge, enlarge. So faithful. Then also he prays for knowledge that, but he prays for protection. He says, Lord, listen, that your hand will be with me. God, just let your hands be upon me to protect me, Lord. When I'm going through things, Lord, when I'm out there, maybe in the midst of something I shouldn't be, Lord, I need your hand to protect you with me. He says, listen, and that you will keep me from evil. You keep, see, we need to pray for people that when they say pray for myself, okay, let me, let me pray for you. I'm going to pray that the Lord will keep you from evil. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, well, I want to do, no, no, I'm going to pray for the Lord will keep you evil. So it means you don't have to go out tonight. Come on, man. I, I'm serious. See, you don't have to do that when you allow me to pray for you to keep you from evil. Because there's some evil things out there. And you need God's protection upon you. That's why, listen, you ought to be praying for your children all the time. When they go to school, when they go out so far, Lord, protect them from evil. I'm not with them, Lord, but let your presence be with them. See, that's the favor of God. You stop praying for them. And watch this. And the last thing he simply says, and not only that, he says also, God's time. Because guess what? This is what the Bible says now. He says that Lord, you will not cause that I will not cause pain. Can you pray that Lord, I will not cause pe people pain in their life? That Lord, instead of being painful, Lord, let my experience be pleasurable. I want to cause pleasure in people's lives instead of pain. Lord, listen, I want to be a blessing to people instead of being a hindrance. 
Lord, I want to be a stepping stone to somebody instead of being a stumbling block. I don't want my life to get in the way of anybody to cause pain and having on people's lives. So you start praying there, and guess what? God will give you pleasure. Watch this. In the midst of your pain. Because you can't give away something that you don't have. See, painful people cause pain upon other people. How many know what I'm talking about? Come on, stay your head, praise the Lord. You can't give something you don't have. So if you get pain, that's all you do is give pain. But when you get the pleasure of God, when you get the favor of God, when you get the protection of God, when you get God's surrounding you all the time, then that's what you give the other. I said, Lord, bless me so I can be a blessing to other people. Hallelujah. And guess what? The Bible says, so grant, grant God granted him what he requested. Hallelujah. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find it. Knock and that door shall be opened. God, I'm praying because I want you to grant my request. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, number two. The description of God's favor is present when, number two, Help is made available unto a person at a time from a place they least expected. Hallelujah. Look at John chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 9. When you least expect it, favor can show up at any time. <laughs> All right, this is Jesus. And this is, he's at a feast, probably the Passover feast. And at the Passover, people come from all over. And, uh, you know, he's been ministering and you know, and the Bible says, verse 1, it says, And there was a feast of Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He had just come out of Galilee and, and so forth. And so, uh, you know, he goes to Jerusalem for this feast. Verse 2 says, Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, and waiting for the moving of the water. Verse four, for an angel went down at a certain time in the pool and stirred up the water, and whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Verse five says, now a certain man was there who had an infirmity. How long? 30. How long? 30. How long? 30. Somebody say a long time. 38 years. It says, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been for that condition a long time, he said to him, listen, do you want to be made well? <laughs> wow. Next verse. The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water stirred up, but while I'm coming, another step down before me. Verse 8 says, now watch this. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Verse 9 says, and immediately the man was made well. Took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath day. Listen, this guy had been lame for 38 years. Couldn't walk. Laying there in a bad fix, in a bad situation. But there was something special about this day. Something different about this day. Something different from all of 38 years because on this day, something was going to happen. That God's favor was going to come down upon this man. And guess what? Jesus asked him a question. It was an inquisitive question to this man. And simply says, do you want to get well? You know, uh, one time I preached a message. No, I heard a message. I'll never forget it. It's, 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 it was by the, by the late of uh, uh, John Osteen, which is Joel Osteen's father. And uh, this message was about more than 30 years ago. We went out into a, a, um, a conference out in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And this is before Joel Osteen you know, became pastor of Lakewood. He wasn't even preaching at the time. His father, John Osteen, uh, preached a message. I'll never forget it. And the name of his message was, How Bad Is Your Home To? 
He used this text. How bad is your want to? Have, have, listen, have you ever talked to people and you ask them about some things and they give you all a bunch of excuses? Well, I, I will do this, and you know, I can't do this, you know, and I can't do that, and this has happened to me, and whatever it is, you know. And the question is, how bad is your want to? We look, look at somebody and say, friend, how bad is your want to? <laughs> Hallelujah! And Jesus looked at this man and said, listen, listen, do you want to get well? I don't want to hear about your excuses. I don't want to hear about your problems. I don't want to hear about your comments. I want to know how bad is your want to? <laughs> how bad is your want to? Do you want something so bad? Do you want this favor so bad you can almost smell it? You can almost take it. Whereas you get a situation and you say, you know what? Listen, I don't care what I've been through. I'm coming out of that situation. I may be down, but I'm coming up. Listen, I, I may be confused, but my mind is, I, I got a strong want to. I won't, I won't stop until I get it. Praise the Lord. Jesus will say, how bad is your want to? Jesus said he tells this man, give an excuse. And finally, Jesus, I understand this. He does not give this man a suggestion. He says, listen, rise, take up your bed and walk. And I want to tell you, glory to God, when favor comes, it's not a suggestion. It's a command. And you receive it as an authoritative word from the Lord. And that word is, it's time for you to rise up and walk. You've been stumbling for long. You've been crawling for long. You've been on your bed for so long. People have been walking over you and walking by you. And you, listen, you're not existent. But I want to tell you, it's time for you to rise up and walk. And that's what favor do. Favor will get you up and you'll walk like God wants you to walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you least expect it, favor will show up. I've got this down here. It says this. It is based upon the grace, truth, and power of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, rise up and walk. Right. Say it's time. It said it's time for me to rise up and walk. That's the favor. That's what favor says. Rise up and walk. Number three, number three, number three. It says this. The description of God's favor is present. Listen. When a person, listen to me now, is summoned by God to the great work when they were not thinking about God at all. <laughs> Look at Acts chapter 9, verses uh, 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 1 through verse 6. Are you thinking about God? And favor comes on you. <laughs> it says this, that Saul, still breathing threats and, and murders against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and, listen, and asked letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus. So he found any who were of the way, where men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now the way is what Christians were called earlier. They were not called Christians. The Bible says not until the end of So this move of God uh, among believers that follow Jesus, they were called the way, if I say the way. So you see, the way, that was a movement that Christians were called in the early church. The way, if I say the other way. And so this guy named Saul, listen, he had witnessed, listen, the, the testimony of Stephen. And the Bible says that he gave consent to Stephen's death. And they laid the clothes of Stephen by, by, by this guy by the name Saul. And he was on a one-man mission to wipe out this way. To wipe out followers of Jesus. Why? Because they were a threat into his religion. And so therefore, he had to get the letters and say, you know what, I'm going and I'm going to find these Christians and I'm going to bound them and I'm going to take them back to Jerusalem. We're going to lock them up. They're going to stand trial and we're going to exterminate these Christians. I'm on a mission. Verse 3 says, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly, if I say suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Verse 5, and he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord says, I am Jesus. Aren't you glad to hear the voice of Jesus? <laughs> he said, whom you are persecuting. Now notice now that Saul was not persecuting Jesus in this sight. He thought he was doing something against the church. But Jesus, who was the Lord of the church, Says, when you do it unto the least of these, my brother, you do it unto me. That's why I tell people, you must be very careful what you say about the church. Mm 
when you watch it, watch it, because as Jesus said, when you do it to, to them, you're doing it unto me. When you say you don't have anything to do with the church, what you're simply saying, you don't have anything to do with me. If you say you're going to be a believer, you need to be a belonger. Oh, come on, somebody say amen, or say out to one, praise the Lord, and then you can become what I can become. So, and then the Lord says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Verse 6. So he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, now here it is. Here's one of the most important questions you can ever ask Jesus in your life. Not asking for a car, not asking for a house, not asking for money, not asking for a position, not asking for healing. You know, all those things are fine. But here is the most important thing a Christian can ever ask Jesus. Here it is. Lord, what would you want me to do? Hallelujah. Glory to God. What do you want me to do, Lord? And then the Lord says, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told to you what you must do. How many know that Saul was minding his own business? But favor don't care. And favor, listen, will take you from an old lifestyle and put you on a new lifestyle. You may be going one direction and think you're doing the right thing, but listen, my friend, I want you to listen to me, Facebook. When listen, when you believe in favor and God's favor come, it will come to you when you take your mind your business, and it will arrest you, it'll stop you, it'll put you in your tracks, and guess it says, you know what? I got a new plan, I've got a new position, I've got a new assignment for you. And guess what? It's not about you, it's all about him. Says what the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, see 2 Corinthians 5, 17. See, if any man be in Christ, what he is a new creation. All things are passed away, but behold, all things are new. Everybody say new. Yeah. See, that's what grace and favor do. Great favor will put you on a new path, a new direction, praise the Lord, and you have new opportunities as well as new blessings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I thank God for favor. Somebody say thank God for favor. Thank God for favor. Praise the Lord. Mind your own business and favor come and arrest you. Listen, you think you're going to do one thing, you think you're going to say something, it wouldn't happen. And before you know, you're like, Ooh, let them come and ask me something again. I'm going to share them something. Let them come and mess with me. They don't think I'm talking about. It. And they come, favor comes to you, and before you know it, you say, how you doing today? <laughs> Something I know I'm talking about, all right? You got your mind made up, you will give them a piece of your mind, and that's dangerous because some of us always got a piece. So that's why, but you said, you know what? Instead of giving them a piece of your mind, give them a favor! <laughs> and God will take care of you. Number four. Uh, number four. I like this. See, a person, this, the description of God's favor is present when, number four, a person is guided to make efforts that leads to great achievements. Look at Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 9. So I'm just giving you examples of how favor comes, how favor, the description of favor, how it comes. Least expected, minding your own business, all these kind of things, you know, what will, will come. It says, verse 1, it says, So it was that the multitude see about the hymn, it's talking about Jesus, to hear the word of God. Then he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, which is basically the Sea of Galilee. This is Jesus. He had come to preach, you know, and there were so many people there that, they, you know, it, 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 they surrounded him. He says, you know, I got to kind of push out a little bit so that people can hear what I have to say. Why? And the Bible says they came, watch this, to hear the word of God. People came to hear the word of God. I, 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 want, I want to say something to you. Because there are a lot of people who are going through a lot of difficult things and they've tried so much. they tried this, they tried this, and they never have come and simply said, you know what, if I want change in my life, I need to hear the word of God. Listen, I may not like it, I may not agree with it, I may not even understand it, but if I just get that word, that one word, that word, it can change my situation. It can change my life. And so when people come to me and find a problem, I say, tell me, when do you get in the word of God? Well, I want prayer. Well, I, prayer is okay, but prayer needs to be based on the word of God. Because this, the Bible is, this prayer is not some hocus pocus. The Bible is not some 
magical book. And God is not a genie in a lamp. God sends the word of God to you so you can hear the word because faith comes by what? Hear. And hear by the word of God. And without faith, you can't believe God. And so, again, people have been hoodwinked to think they can be delivered from their situation without the word of God. And you know, the Bible talks about that uh, in the last days, you read over in Second Timothy, he tells the preacher, he says the time will come when people will not endure sound doctrine. But they have itching ears. They want to be entertained. You know, they want to hear, you know, they want to see Bozo the Clown and Poo Poo the Dog. That's what they want. They want to go to a three hour concert and don't think about it, but can't sit down for 45 minutes and hear the word of God and wonder why they're in that situation. Can I preach the truth up here? I say, can I preach the truth up here? And Facebook, you better not turn me off. If you want change, you got to be in a position to hear change, and the word of God can not only change your situation, but the word of God can change you. And your Bible says they pressed upon him. This they came so far, they came to hear the word of God. And that's the reason why we preach the word of God. That's why we're on Facebook. That's why we're looking at social media. That's why we're looking at every avenue that we can. YouTube. Listen, I don't care if it's MySpace, my face. I don't care what it is. TikTok, you know, I don't care what it is. We are finding every avenue for people to hear the word of God so there'll be no excuse. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And now, if, if, if I got a phone, anybody, if y'all have a cell phone, here, would you just raise it up? You got the cell phone. Would you just raise it up? I just want to make sure. Okay. It, it about, are we still in the dark ages and nobody has a cell phone? <laughs> Everybody got a cell phone, right? Now, there is an app that you can get. It's called the Bible. And you can find anything on your cell phone, the Word of God. So don't tell me you don't have time for the Word of God. You got time for Facebook. You got time to text your friend. What's up, homie? Oh man, what's going on? You know? You can take five minutes to look up the word of God and, get, and we give you scripture. So don't tell me you can't hear the word of God. I'ma call you out when you say I don't have time. If you can listen to 92Q, you can listen to the word of God. Hello, somebody. I'll oh, pass you we'll preaching the message now. I'm sorry, I'm not talking about how you get this faith. Hear the word of God and favor will come. Alright? Uh, and he stood by the land of Asa, and he saw two boats, two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out from them and were washing their nets, the nets. Now I understand something here, they were washing nets uh, to do that. That's what fishermen do, you know, because they get the seaweed and the trash and stuff out. That's how they did, how they, they say, call fish through nets. But those nets had to be cleaned to get all the debris, the rocks, the trash and stuff out. So they were washing their nets so they'd be ready to go back out again. Now watch verse three. Then Jesus got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, so he preached his sermon, stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for, ca for ca a catch. Verse 5. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Now let me stop right there. Fishermen fish at nighttime because in the nighttime, the fish will come in the shallow areas of the water. And that's when the best time to catch the fish. In the daytime, the fish will go out into the deep part of the water. And they knew most of the time, fishermen from time from nighttime would not go out in the daytime to catch the fish there. But Jesus says, launch out into the deep. Why? Because the fish are there. 
And Peter's response was, Simon's response was, Lord, we've talked all night long. Lord, you are carpenter. We are fishermen. We know how to catch fish. And you're telling us to launch unto the deep. Lord, it's hot out there. And all night long we've been trying to catch some fish in the nighttime in the shallow waters. And Lord, you want us to go out in the hot sun and to, in the deep water where nobody goes to catch the fish? <laughs> we've told all night long. Listen, we, listen, the only bite we got was a mosquito bite. <laughs> Nothing's bite. There's a fisherman in here, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? You know, all the you kind of bite together with a bunch of mosquitoes, they caught anything at all. But I like it, Richard. He says, nevertheless, everybody say nevertheless. At your word. Because you gave us a word, and Lord, we know you never go back upon your word. At your word, Lord, we'll let down the net. Now go back up in verse uh, 4. The Lord says, let down your nets. Everybody say nets. nets. Now, is nets singular or plural? plural? That means more than one, right? Yeah. Can we agree nets mean more than one? Yeah. So what Peter simply says is, okay, Lord. All right, Lord. Okay. Yeah, Lord, okay. All right. I'll do it. But Lord, I won't fully do it. I'm going to do it my way, not your way. So instead of doing what you say do it, Lord, I, I said, I'll do this half thing right here. So in case it works, I can come back. Anybody be like this? Lord, tell you to do something, and you don't trust the Lord fully, and you want to do it your own way? I made my preach that church down here. I ain't talking about nothing here. Yeah. You want to do it your way, because you don't think the Lord know what he's talking about. So, Lord, at your word, I'll let down the net. Now watch the next verse. Go ahead. Verse 6. And when they had done this, let down one day, they caught a great number of fish, notice, and the net was breaking. Verse 7, so they signaled to their partners in other boats to come and help them, and they came and fell both the boats so that they began to sink. Boy, I tell you, glory to God, fish were biting that day. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> And verse 8 says, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down to Jesus' knees and saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Verse 9, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish with their tails. We continue to read, Jesus says, Listen, drop your nets and come, I will make you fishes of men. When you listen to my word, when you obey me, I've got so much to do. And so Simon Peter knew that this, first of all, he knew Jesus was doing what he's talking about. So he said, I'm a sinful man. Jesus, you know more about my situation than I do. But secondly, he realizes that he only gave Jesus partial obedience. Listen to me now. Partial obedience is nothing but disobedience. You know, you know, if you're you go up and your mama tell you to go and do something, clean up the room. Say, clean up the room. And you go and just make up the bed come out. Huh? But when we go up, when we did that, we got it, all right? Well, mama did. No, I told you to clean up the room. Well, mama, the bed was in the room. Listen, don't get smart with me now, boy. <laughs> and many times the Lord comes and tells you, I told you to do this. And ask for forgiveness. And you call and the phone ring two times, you hang up. Oh, y'all down. I'm gonna be real up here. I thought I call. Call back again. <laughs> Why is that? Because God got a big great blessing. And then the fifth one, the final one, we're gonna close out here. Thank you so for your obedience. Thank you for listening to this word. I want this word to get inside you so much. I want you to see the faith that God wants to pay you so much. Have abundant blessings for you. When you do it God's way. So number five, this description of God's favor is present in area of when number five, favor singles you out in a crowd for a miracle. Look at Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to verse 52. 
Pharaoh will single you out. He got a miracle just for you. Other people may be around you, but that miracle, he said that blessing, it has your name on it. It's for you. He says, now when they came to Jericho, this is Jesus, as he went out of Jericho, the disciples, a great multitude, Bible says, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. He was a beggar. He was blind. Back then, when you were blind, you couldn't work. You couldn't work. You couldn't provide for your family, yourself. And so the only way you could get means necessary is that you had to beg for people. Verse 47. And when he heard uh, that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And then many warned him to be quiet. Shut up! But he cried out the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. He cried out unto the Lord. They say, shut up. He said, I can't. Why not? Y'all can see I'm blind. And I recognize his voice. I recognize his voice. And so Jesus stood still. How many know you call on Jesus sometimes? It'll stop him wherever he's on. Whatever he's doing, he'll stop him because you call on the name of Jesus. Just call on the name of Jesus. Sometimes you just say Jesus. Sometimes you may not have time for a long prayer. Jesus! You go into a situation and sometimes you don't know what to say. Just say his name, Jesus! The songwriter said there's something about the name of Jesus. Stopped him. He was walking. And he commanded him, watch this, to be called. Then they called the blind man and said to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he's calling you. Now, what I want you to go back to say in verse 46 says that there was a great multitude with Jesus. A multitude mean a bunch of people. He went by himself. And so people, well, well, listen, they were around Jesus and you know, he had not only had his entourage, but he had all kind of people. And I'm sure that there were people there also who was with him who was poor. There was people who were destitute. There was people who had a difficult time. There was people who was hungry. There was people who, listen, was, was, was in a situation. I'm kind of, these people from all level where, you know, and Jesus still walking. And they just followed Jesus. But there was one man <laughs> that he heard with Jesus. He said, I don't care what you think about me. I don't care how you feel about me. I don't care how you judge me. Listen, when I hear his name, I got to cry out, Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Verse 5 says, 50 says, no, verse 49. So Jesus stood still commanding to call. And when they called him down, they said, be of good cheer, rise. He's calling you. Those same folk told him, shut up. All right, just, all right, come on, come on now, come on up here. <laughs> and watch this, verse 50 says, and throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. Now understand, when you were poor, you had a certain amount of garment that you had. And when people saw that garment on you, they knew that you was a beggar. They knew that you were poor. They knew that you couldn't help yourself when they saw that garment. But listen, when he heard the voice of Jesus, and Jesus called him. The first thing he did was he threw off that garment. He said, no longer will I be identified as being poor. No longer will I be identified as being a beggar. No longer will I be identified as being blind. I'm throwing off my garment. My friends, sometimes the stuff is holding you down. You need to throw it off. What garment are you wearing that you need to get rid of today? Where is the garment of depression? The garment of a broken heart, the garment of a mental condition, the garment of a loneliness, the garment of doubt, the garment of fear, the garment of rejection. You've been wearing that garment for a while and it's time for you to throw it off. The garment of bondage, the garment of trying to be popular to make people like you, you need to get rid of it. Go to the next verse, verse 51. He says, so Jesus answered and said to him, watch this, here we say, 
what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. That's all I want. I'm tired of being a beggar. I'm tired of being lonely. I'm tired of being poor. I'm tired of people walk, walking by me and, and walking over me and feeling sorry for me. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of being downcast. I'm tired of people past me. That's something better. I'm tired of being addicted. I'm tired of people using me. I'm tired of that. Blind man said, Rabbi, I may see my sight. Verse 52. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Hmm. Watch this. What's this? What's this? Says this. Your what? Your what? Your what? Your what? Has made you well. See, saints, there's no coincidence why God calls this ministry house of faith. Because we preach, we teach, we believe, we walk by, we understand, we preach faith. Because it's going to be the faith of God that's going to make you well. It's going to be the faith of God that's going to deliver you. It's going to be the faith of God that's going to get you out of that situation. It's going to be the faith of God that will do, will make you well. And the Bible says, and immediately he received his sight. Watch this. And he followed Jesus on the road. See, when God comes to give you favor, don't forget about him. You want to follow him. Follow who he is. Follow what he said. Follow what he taught. Follow what he did for you on the cross. Watch this. And follow him until you are. That's what the scripture of grace and favor is all about. It's all about Jesus. Everybody. Say, Jesus! Jesus. Come on, say it like it man. Jesus! Yes. Have mercy! Have mercy. On, me. on me. Everybody's telling you, people. That's what you have to do. You call on mom, you call on dad, you call on friends, you call on family members. There's nobody can have mercy for you like Jesus. And that's the favor we need. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take these confessions that we have. And again, they're not just words. When you confess something, you come in agreement with some things that you're going to say. So let's take and say these words. I confess, I confess that, I will seek that I will seek the face, the face and faith of, of God in prayer. In Number two, so I confess, I confess that, favor that favor will be made available, be made available to me at, at a time and a place when I least expect it. Number three, so I confess that favor calls me away from my old lifestyle and commissioned me to a new way of living. Number four, so I confess that this favor will allow me to launch out into the deep things of the kingdom of God. Based upon, Based upon the, word the word of God. Number five, so I confess, I confess that, the favor, that the, favor the, favor the favor of God will single me out, sing me out of, the crowd of the crowd for my miracle. For my miracle. <laughs> Singing you out! That miracle is waiting for you. Nobody will make it, but it's for you. When you call upon the name of Jesus. Let's take our prayer commitment. Ready? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the description of your favor on my life. And I will seek your face and favor in prayer. I thank you that this favor will be made available at a time and place when I least expect it. And this favor calls me from my old lifestyle and commissions me to a new way of living. I will launch out into the deep things of your kingdom based upon your words. Thank you for singing me out of the crowd for my miracle. Because I'm favored by you, by faith, I receive your amazing favor in my life. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you this morning as we close out here about this favor. The last scripture we looked at brought behind Bartimaeus. He understood the situation he is. And I'm sure many times maybe the enemy says, you know what? <laughs> Man, if you cry like that unto the Lord, what are people gonna think about you? 
they, they, they're going to look at you, they're going to look down at you and whatever it is, you know, and you don't want people to look at you like that. And you just need to be quiet. And there's some people here today, maybe either through Facebook and this witch experience, that you understand that you need this favor. Maybe you're not physically blind, but maybe spiritually, emotionally, socially, you're blind. You're in a destitute situation. And God wants to call you out to receive your miracle to receive this favor. And the enemy said, you won't fucking know your business. No, that's a lot for the pits of hell. See, favor is there to bring you out that you have. And my friend, if you listen to this broadcast and you say, you know what? I need the favor of God just to be saved right now. Listen, I'm in a situation right now I don't like being here and I want to come out. My friend, you just received the word how you can come out. You can receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. What do I need to do, preacher? Simple as A, B, C. A, say, admit that you're a sinner. You deserve to die in your sin. B says, believe the Lord Jesus Christ. That this, he died on the cross for your sin, and now you want to repent of all of your sins. And C says, you want to confess him as the Lord. He's owning your life right now. And my friends, you willing to do those simple ABCs? I'm going to tell you, you will receive a favor of salvation based on the grace of God. See, listen, faith takes what grace makes. Grace is God's part, the favor. Your part is faith. So my friends, if you're doing that, if someone here today, you've never received Jesus first and one Savior, listen, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Prayer that millions of people have prayed Asking God for favor for salvation. So, my friends, wherever you may are, you may be driving your car, you may be on your computer, you may be on your cell phone, wherever you are, but God has a word for you right now, and it's just a favor, the scripture is favor for salvation. Just say this, Father, in the name of Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner, and I deserve to die for my sins. But I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and Father, I want to repent of every sin I've done, all the wrongs I've done. I want to repent. It's not just I'm just sorry for all. I repent. I'm willing to turn away. And Father, I want to confess Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Father, for your favor that saves me. And I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. My friend, if you just prayed that prayer, listen, man, I want to be the first one to congratulate you. And say, welcome to the kingdom of God. Man, we are so happy. You receive God's faith and salvation. And this is the phone number that you can call. Give us your name, phone number, you know, email address. We'll get back in contact with you and continue congratulations because we want you to go to the next step. Because the next step is, listen, if you're going to be a believer, you need to be a belonger. You need to be, have a church family. You need to have a church home. You need to have pastors. You need to have men and women of God in your life. And it's for you. And so again, if you're here today, maybe some of you are here today, you say, yeah, Pastor, I received Jesus, but you know what? I'm not living like God wants me to live. I need to come back to the Lord. I need a church family. I need pastors. I need somebody who's going to love me. I need somebody who's going to tell me the truth, who's not going to sugarcoat it, who's going to look me in the eye and tell me, thus said the Lord, but they're going to say it in love. And my friends, if you're here today, you can do that today. If you're here today, just say, it's me, Pastor. Raise your hand. Anyone here today that says, you know what? I want to be dedicating my life to the Lord. I want to come back. If you're here, we'll pray for you right now. If you watch this broadcast, we'll pray for you right now. But you need a church family. You need to hear the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord is to come back to the Lord and be a part of this church. That's the word of the Lord. That's all I can tell you, man. I can't tell you anything different. What I need to know, the word of the Lord is come back to Jesus and get back into the church. That's the word. I need another word. God's not giving no word to you giving that one. That's the favor he wants to give to you. That's why you listen to this broadcast. That's why you're here today. I want to talk to you. So receive that. And we pray for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Just pick up your phone. Dial yourself at number 615-223-0420. Leave your name, phone number, email address. We'll get back in contact with you so you can understand more about the scripture of God's favor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
praying to you. Now listen, we're going to pick this up uh, on Wednesday night. So you don't want to miss Wednesday night. Uh, we'll go back over this and some things that God will add to it because we want you to have this favor. And you got to ask yourself, how bad is my want to? <laughs> how bad you want to? Praise the Lord. It's good. But did y'all enjoy that word this morning, man? Thank you so much. Oh, Lord, God. Yeah, get a little hand clap for that word. Thank you. Oh, it's life changing. It's life changing in Jesus' name. But listen, we are going to go ahead and continue on worshiping the Lord. It is now our period of opportunity for forgiving. Praise the Lord. And we're going to give as God has blessed us. If you need an offer, number one, raise your hand. Uh, and uh, we will come and we serve you. Remember, we're not trying to thank God. We can't thank God. We don't have enough money to thank God. But we say, God, I thank you. Now remember, grace is God's part. Faith is our part. And so when we're giving, we're giving in faith. We say, Lord, thank you for that word that would change my life. And God, I, I receive that. So therefore, God, I want to sow it to that word. I want more of this word. I don't want to stay the same. I want to increase. Lord, enlarge my territory to receive from you. So again, you give me, you can give through text giving. You can give online giving. Uh, website, go to our website and do that. You know, you can give checks. You can give mail through the mail. You can give money orders through the mail. All that information is made available to you. But listen, you don't want to miss out on sowing. You don't want to miss out on so on because, again, it's evident your faith has connected to what you just heard that you have. And again, God's not looking about how much you give, but he's looking at how you give. What's your attitude? See, God is not a taker. He's a giver, and he wants you to do that. So, listen, you've got that. You've done that also. You've made out the checks to Hopper Bay Christian Center, mail order. You, you did the app, the online giving, text giving, how you want to do that. Uh, praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and give. Now, remember, what you have in your hand, again, is a sign of your faith that you're reaching out to the description of God's favor that you heard. And so, if y'all have your envelopes, just go ahead and just raise your hand right now. If you have your envelope, uh, watch this by broadcast. You want to give, and then go ahead and just hold it up right now. We're going to pray over you, over your offering right now. Father, we just want to thank you again for this offering. Uh, Father God, we thank you for the description of your favor. We thank you, Father God, through the anointing of God that burdens are removed, yokes are destroyed. And Father God, we thank you in your favor that we are the healed, protecting our health. So we speak every sickness, every disease, every virus, every cold, every symptom. Father, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus because we speak and declare favor through this offering, Father God, that we're connected to you and our lives will be the same. We will receive all things you have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. But let's just go ahead and just give us God his blessings. And we thank God for uh, being a part of in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. But listen, uh, uh, those who are getting questions about Facebook and social media, I want to thank you again for turning into this broadcast. And uh, listen, you want to tune in every Sunday morning, same time, to get this word of God that you have. But again, we want to invite you to come to our worship service. We're located at the North of Rutherford YMCA in beautiful Smyrna, Tennessee. Our worship service begins at 9 o'clock, and uh, we have an awesome time in praise and worship. Uh, praise the Lord. And uh, I'll tell you, praise and worship is just so awesome this morning. The Lord Glory to God that God just blessed us as well. So come on out to House of Faith Christian Center and be a part of what God is doing here in Smyrna, Tennessee. So again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. House of Faith Christian Center, we have a threefold vision that is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. House of Faith Christian Center. We are mission excellence, effectiveness, and encouragement. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. I want to leave you these familiar words. Remember Jesus, Lord, and continue to show compassion in your action. And we'll see you next time. God bless you. And you have a great day.